hi guys welcome to my channel if this is your first time my name is Nelly welcome to my new subscribers and to my old subscribers thank you so much love and support are fully appreciated and not taken for granted well um, if you follow my old video that I just posted about five days or one week ago um, I did not keep count about that I posted about my health care in Nigeria you know um, why I'm making this video today is because um, somebody actually emailed me and was like, why am I painting Nigerian hospital bad? Nope, I am not painting Nigerian hospital bad. I also have a call from a friend and she was like, I watch your video Nelly. And I would have loved if you had really explained what happened, you know, and I told her my husband doesn't want me to mention the name. She said, but you just explained a little what happened, you know, so that people will learn from it and while I was still thinking if I'm going to do that video, I was re reading Linda Ikeji blog. I saw where a guy, uh, he talked about how the hospital in Benin killed his um, his wife. She was pregnant and after she gave birth, you know, they killed her. I just want to talk about that and also talk about my own because somebody actually told me, did you actually go to a government hospital? Or was it a private hospital you went? I said a private hospital. And she was like, should have gone to a government hospital. Now, reading what I read from Linda KG blog, this guy went to um, a government hospital. So it was actually a government hospital. His wife died. So this is what he said. When they found out the wife was pregnant, they registered her for antenatal. And then when she was due, they took her to the hospital. They induced her from Monday to Wednesday. She was... On the label, she successfully now gave birth to a child with a six section. After she gave birth, she started bleeding. The doctor told her they have to take out the uterus. Now, something like this happened years ago to somebody very, very, very close to me. She gave birth successfully and now she started bleeding. What they did in the United States took her back into the theater two times. I saw the blood gushing as if it's a tap. And when the blood comes out, it's now it will now cake like liver. They took her in. I don't know what they did to the uterus. They did not take out the uterus. In fact, that person has successfully given birth to three more kids, making it four kids. They did something to the uterus that made the uterus start contracting. I don't know the term. I don't know what that term is, you know. So now as I was reading this lady's own, I was wondering why would they want to take out the uterus? But let me keep reading and now they took out the uterus when they took out the uterus eventually the kidney was affected they asked this person and she lost a lot of blood they asked her to the husband to buy pints of blood he bought blood they did everything intensive care the woman finally died this is a government hospital i just believe hospitals regardless governments or private they are all the same now, why did I go to private clinic? I went to a private clinic because that was a referrer. A friend of mine told me the doctor is good. Also, I felt I was going to be attended to quickly um, compared to the government hospital where they will keep you for long before they attend to you. You know the procedures, the drill. So I believe if I to private clinic, they will attend to me. And that was why we went there. Into what happened to me, I'm going to put a picture here. People that saw me back in Africa, the picture I'm going to put up there, that's how my stomach was. Like, I see that I was nine months pregnant. There's a medication I took, it reacted to my system. All the fluid from my body got to my stomach and made my stomach look like what I'm going to put out there. Hopefully, I'll put it, but if I don't put it, pardon me, but I know I'm going to put up a picture there to show you what how my stomach got. So now... The fluid made me, I was no longer peeing. I went to the doctor, I explained, and he was like, okay, we need to do paracentesis. Paracentesis is where they take out the fluid from your stomach, you know. So when I went in there, believing everything was going to be fine, because this clinic, you want to believe, is a very big clinic, looking expensive and everything, you know, with good reviews. So when I went there, maybe because of the festive period, that's what I'm going to think now. When I went in there, they were going to uh, t do the paracentesis and everything. So now, when they laid me down, start poking my stomach, I asked them, are you not going to do an ultrasound? He said, oh, this is what we do to everybody. If you watch my old video, I said it. 
this is what we do to everybody we know where the fluid is and by gravity the fluid is going to come out when we poke you like me that wanted a relief like I wanted a relief like this I felt the water was right here because I could not eat I was actually starving I lay down they poke me <laughs> I don't think that it's called poke like they oh, 25 almost 25 times with no numbing effects you know when you have a turkey those of you doing Thanksgiving yeah you saute with the marinade with all the spices you poke the turkey to put that was I, I was being poked with those long needles no numbing effect nothing and I said but I am different at least check where I knew that what they were doing was wrong now did I stop them no or be, I just wanted to relieve because I was in so much pain I was going there almost like almost every other day yet nothing they would poke 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 the Second to the last before I pushed the doctor was when he poke 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 cut cut very traumatic when I remember this thing and there was a blood return and I was like you're not supposed to because my eyes were really open now like you're not supposed to get a blood return you know and then he would just drain out sometimes just fifty cc hundred cc yet my stomach is still big the ascites you cannot even push down like I was in pain like when they are driving if I'm sitting in the car and you drive every little bomb you enter i am in so much pain my friend's husband that, that helped us that period like he literally would drive very carefully because i'm in so much pain i was taking trauma door like people didn't even know i was sick because after taking those trauma door they gave to me at the hospital when somebody called me on the phone i would manage to talk then it was not this bad what i had not gotten in my lungs so i keep going to the hospital when they took me in like i said they poked me everywhere on my stomach and my stomach was still big with pain you know i was kind of they said the issue of blood mine was the issue of water i was leaking water every on my stomach because that was where they poke 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 no numbing effects you know so um i went to the hospital again because they want, wanted to travel they said i have to use medical uh flight whatever they mean i don't even know you know so I have to like still go for them to drain out more fluid. And my husband asked me not to go again. But because I was the one literally drowning in my own fluid. I was suffocating with the fluid. No, I, like back in Nigeria where we lived, I could not even come down the stairs. I was just sitting at the spot. And that was how that blood clot started developing on my leg. Because I was literally staying in one place. I could not eat. My husband would cook and cook food and love most i could not eat it because the water filled me up everywhere you know, now they took me into the theater um so when they started doing the procedure my spouse was in the i think he was in the theater and the doctors start um they opened me up here a catheter a catheter is something they put into the male or the female ritual extracts urine out those of you that don't see section or procedures you know what a catheter is so they were trying to put a catheter on my right side while I was lying on that trolley they took the lights now what helped us was it was this procedure was performed during the day so the glasses is it GNC the glasses like the sliding it was transparent you could see the sun in there but then my mind I was like but who would take a patient in a theater to do a procedure with Nigerian kind of light Nepal light you know, who would take a person into a theater with Nepal light like, knowing that our lights are not constant you would have just tell them to turn on the generator knowing that you want to do a procedure I mean that was not really really an invasive procedure but at least you're attempting into somebody's body you know then it was still transparent like I said this happened like at like two o'clock so it was still daytime so the light from the window was still reflecting in the theater then they changed to generator just imagine they were trying to put a catheter in here, my, my stomach. I was still lying there, there. Now, do I know if what he's doing is right or wrong? Of course, I knew they were not following the procedure. Did they know it? Yes, I believe they know it. Now, do they want to do a shortcut? That I don't know. Because there was no ultrasound done. Like, he was trying to put a catheter inside of me without any guidance to know where he's going. Then I realized my liver is on my right <laughs> thinking this guy is putting and no numbing effects like no numbing effect that is the worst part all the 25 needles or more than the five needles that they poked me 
on this storm of things, never numb anyway. Now he opened me up with us whatever surgical scissors and was trying to push in the catheter in me to drain the fluid. I will put a picture so you guys see somebody that has what I have, how the, the he was supposed to have done it, you know. So then when I realized, I literally pushed him up because he did not medicate me. <laughs> I was there with my full sense, my cognitions were intact, everything. And I was like, wait a minute, what am I doing? I Got up with all the pain I was feeling. I pushed him. I said, how dare you put a character in me without a guidance? How would you know where you're going? What if you punch something in me? That was when my husband said, Nelly, I have told you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> because I don't want them to inject you something. You know, I even got to find out that it, it was two qualified registered nurses there. They have nurses in there. But then there are something that we call a lizard nurse. People that finish high school, or maybe they didn't even finish high school, um, they go to the hospital for the private hospital nurses to train them, and they feel they are nurses. They were trying to take, was it a blood from me? From Nigeria to America, that vein, I, I felt that vein, I see that vein collapse. It was hurting. That, because I was like, why would you even use such a big needle like this? Give me a drip or whatever. And then I asked her, which school did you go? And she was like, oh, I was trained here. I was like, oh my God. I found out that most of them were like that, you know. So let me continue my story. So that was how I told my husband. My husband said he already got a flight for us, but that now they're asking I have to use a medical flight and the rest. My husband literally begs people after that incident, okay, please, can you just... Because then I could not pee. Um, my eyes were already turning whatever color they were turning you could see that i was losing whatever i was losing i was oh my god even when my brother came in to pay a visit he was asking the doctor's question the doctor question the doctor flared up like how dare he ask him such a question you know now this doctor in nigeria are they knowledgeable i believe they are very knowledgeable do they follow the right procedure mm -mm. sometimes they do not know can you even approach them? Mm -mm, you cannot approach them. Why can't you approach them? Because they feel they are your God. They feel they are your God. They feel whatever they say. That is what you have to listen to. And like I said, was I getting relieved? No. Was they asking me for money every day, knowing you're coming from abroad? They were asking for money. At the point, my husband was telling them, please, I have the money. Because all the money he was holding, if you watch my video, I was saying it, was just all gone. You know, they put you in a bed. That, what are they even doing to you? You're just giving you a drip and yet you're not even getting relief. And they're asking for more money. He was like, okay, treat my wife. I will transfer. I don't have physical cash. He has to show them his accounts. When my brother was asking the doctor questions, so how come you're not getting enough flu? Because all the things they were poking me, they were not even getting. So that was because the right procedure was not followed. Just imagine what happened to this lady. If they had done it very well, a qualified doctor. I'm not saying the doctor that did the operation on her was not qualified. But then, when I read it, they said it was a student. Now, tell me, if I had gone there, that was how a student would have practiced on me and killed me too. You know, but God gave me a second chance. So that was how, um, that after that incident, my husband Sam will have to, like, you know, get us a ticket. We came back here, couldn't breathe. I was licking fluid all over my stomach. Legs were swollen. I could not pee, you know. We go here, that was that they found out that the water has got into my lungs, pleural effusion, and my lungs had collapsed. The left, yeah, the left side had collapsed, and that was why I could not breathe. I could not, I was having a shortness of breath. I could not cough. I could not sneeze. If I tried to do all these things, I feel so much pain, you know, and they found out that I was having the pain on my leg, you know, the blood load, and the immediately admission from January. I went back to work literally April. I was in and out from the hospital, in and out from the hospital. They had, we had to drain out those fluid. I went through here, but at least God gave me a second chance. What am I saying in my video? What I just want anybody that watched this video to take is if you have a loved one, they should be knowledgeable about the body system. These days, the internet is your friend. Research. If the doctor is able to tell you what your diagnosis is, Put it on the computer, research and see what they are talking about. Because sometimes they use all this big, big medical term. You don't even know what they're talking about. The, that money you use to make calls and whatever, put that in your phone. Research, ask them for the diagnosis. 
One thing again I found out about Nigerian doctors, they don't tell you the medication what they are giving to you. <laughs> oh my god. They don't even tell you the medication. They are discharging you. They, they will put medication in a plastic bag. They don't even tell you the name of the medication because they don't want you to go buy it outside. They don't want to even know. And I asked them, it's my right to know what I'm taking. I was like, what medication are you guys giving to me? The name. I need the full name. So ask questions. Don't think because that doctor is your physician, whatever the physician say, being a sick person, you have to listen to them. I assure you, not listening to them 100%. Listen once you want to listen. Research what you want to research. Call somebody that you know is in medical life. Ask questions. Pray to God for healing. And also pray to God to make sure whoever doctor you're working with has that God-fearing in him. If they have that God-fearing in him, knowing that a life is precious, they will do everything good to save you. Do people die in America? Do people die in Europe? Of course they do. But I believe they do give their best shots. Of course, doctor, physician, and anesthetologist, they are not God. Only God have the final says. But this God will give you somebody a knowledge, but then you don't want to follow the right procedure, you want to shortcut. And this is what happens, you know. So, whoever is watching my video today, what I want you to do, know your body parts. Just imagine if I did not know my body parts. They put that in and punch something inside of me. Know your diagnosis, put it on the computer, research, Google, call a friend that is in the medical field, ask questions, ask doctors, challenge them, ask them. Are you following the right procedure? Yes, the doctors back in Nigeria are not, not approachable. Because my husband was like, Nelly, just keep your mouth shut so they don't just inject you something and kill you. The doctor is in charge of your life, right? I was like, no. Because when you want to talk to the disease doctor, the way the doctor will keep his face yell, the, with the money you're paying, ask the doctors what is really going on. Do not be afraid. As a patient, that is your right. You have the right to know what medication you're taking. You have the right to know your diagnostics. You have the right to know if they're doing the right procedure on you. You have the right to know whatever that doctor is communicating with you. You have that right. Well, I believe I've made one or two points in this video. Please keep watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share my video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.